Hey there, and welcome back to the Rich Martin podcast with me, Rich Martin. It's so good that you're with us, and today I get to speak with Claire Hooper and Paul Martin all about creativity. These guys are really leading the field in some of the things that they're doing, and so it's a great conversation. But before we jump into that, I'm really proud to be able to partner with Compassion, who helped make this podcast happen. And earlier, I spoke to Claire all about her trip. She went to Uganda with Compassion and what partnership means to her with this great charity. I'm here with Claire Hooper, a friend who had the privilege of going out to a compassion project a couple of years ago in Uganda. Claire, what was that like and what's your thoughts on partnering with compassion? When we first went, Rich, I think like everybody, you never can be fully prepared for what you see. And I kind of knew that I'd sort of thought my way through what I'm going to see when I see poverty. And, And you do, you see things that people shouldn't have to live through. You see things that no eye should have to see. Like it's devastating to see people living the way that they're living and I think what I wasn't expecting was that when we arrived at the Uganda Compassion headquarters just how like structured how well thought through how well managed how well organized it was and that was the thing that really clinched it for me about wanting to partner with them is that I you know you've you've got a group of people we're church leaders we've got we've got a church and we're trying to encourage them to get behind something you want to make sure that when people are giving their money or their time or their prayers that something good's going to be done with that and so it really reassured me I suppose going into those offices in fact actually I I was challenged by how incredibly well run and well thought through the projects were, the education was, the level of detail that each of the people that were trained were, the, com- the compassion they had, the, the, the power they had to change things because of the way that it was structured. So that was my biggest takeaway from being in the Uganda headquarters. We met some amazing people. We went to some projects where people are doing amazing things, like amazing things, doing good, but compassion for me then changed I changed my perspective towards them as just being do-gooders as to being change makers really people who were impacting the world it's only been going 60 years you know and what they've done and achieved 2.1 million children I think now they are sponsoring in 60 years it made me think what could we all do in 60 years so that's why we partnered with them and um Yes, to sponsor children and to get children out of poverty, essential work that the Christian church should be doing, but also to partner with an organization doing what they do. Why wouldn't you want to do that? They're amazing. Amazing. So there you have it, Claire's story of partnership with Compassion. And I want to encourage anyone who's listening is maybe you're thinking about your church partnering or how you could get involved with Compassion. Well, their team would love to be able to connect with you. And you can simply send the word coffee in a text to 88802. And a member of the Compassion team will give you a call to organize a virtual coffee meetup or a real coffee meetup, depending on when you're listening to this. Text will just cost your standard network charge, but that number is 88802 and the word coffee and I've been able to partner with them and it's they're an incredible charity and I know that anyone who does partner with them will see great things happen in their own life but also within the church because just of what they do and so get onto that jump onto it you can also get on my website and find out more information there that's richmartin.co.uk so the podcast now we get to talk with Claire Hooper and my brother Paul Martin all about creativity so let's jump straight in Okay, I'm here with Paul Martin, who is also my brother, and Claire Hooper, who is not my sister, but we've worked with Claire and friends with Claire for many years, and so feels like she's like a sister to me. And so these guys are incredibly creative and uh, both hold their own in the jobs and work that they do. And so I just wanted to have a conversation with them today to basically talk about creativity in a church setting and uh, Paul will explain what he's done, Claire explain what they've done and so thanks for being with me guys. Thanks Rich. Thanks for having us. Now we might get confused because some people say me and Paul have the same voice Um, and so Paul's going to go a bit deeper because he's got a better microphone than me and uh, you'll know Claire because she's the lady on the calls. So So, Claire why don't you... I was going to say, someone said deeper and a little bit sexier, Rich, so oh. I'll, I'll, I'll take it down here. Okay, you can do that. Paul's single oh. as well, guys, just to let you know. <laughs> cool, thanks, Paul. 
Um, Claire, go for it. Give us a rundown of uh, of kind of what you do and your kind of context. Oh, Rich, you asked me that question to say, give yourself a rundown. I'm multi-hyphenated. Come on. I, like, I am a multi-hyphen. Like, I have decided not to say I'm this, that, and the other. No Started full Started off in the world of pardon? No full stops. No full stops, ever evolving, ever adding things. Currently, currently... Um, helping people, agitating people to use their social media in a really positive and wholesome way and use all the tools, maximize all those tools available to them to like break the gospel down and get it into the hands of the people that need it the most. And you do it so well, but you're also, you and Matt, your husband, are running a church called Kingdom Company. Right. Yeah, that as well. That's one of the things that we do. Yeah, sorry, I should have said that. Yeah, we're, we're currently like trying to plant a church in the middle of a pandemic. So, um, how's it going, Claire? Very digital. <laughs> it's very just socially not, distant. It's not the strategy anyone goes about, is it? Because I know. No, the... it's not. It's not, but I've loved it. I've really loved the pivot. I've really loved the opportunity to um, like dig deeper into the digital side of the world. So, yeah. Uh, it's been amazing to to watch the journey as well. So you do a great job. Paul, give us a rundown of your world. Yeah, sure. So um, for nine years, I've been working with Hillsong in London and in Sydney. And then I moved back about a year ago and I started working with Integrity Music on their roster. And Integrity just have, they have a roster of kind of Christian artists. Um, and then I've got a couple of side projects on the side. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of, it's not as multi-hyphen as Claire. I feel like I'm losing already. <laughs> no. I've just boxed myself in. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just expand a little bit on that, Paul. What do you do for integrity, just so people know when they... Yeah, yeah. So uh, official title is Director of Digital Business, but um, reality is it's basically poking my nose in across all areas of the label, publishing and marketing, to see how we can kind of lift up the digital platforms um, to kind of better serve... Uh, our artists and to better serve um, our audience as well. Amazing, amazing. So I've got two creative geniuses sat right in front of me who also have been based and run and helped in local church for decades. Um, people who are building local church, it can get quite monotonous. It can it can just be the same thing over and over again. You guys have worked in creative teams or done creative things, and obviously it's what you're doing now. What What you know you're sorry you're bold in it as well what's triggered or what are your triggers to get creative in church claire well the gospel is not a marketing campaign it's a mission that we're all on and um i think people get stuck behind um long process or the opposite to short process like they want there's an event we've got to do something there's an event we've got to do something we've got to tell people we've got to tell people and in the in the process of telling people about the thing that you want to do you forget about being on mission and about the beauty of that mission the passion of that mission the longevity of that mission the exposure that it, that it brings just by being in the detail of the mission and then the method changed I mean we've, we've been Christian for 2,000 years we're not just been Christians in 2020 so the method has changed all over all those years and allowing that and so I suppose it, it, that would be where I would would start with is, is wanting to encourage people to get back to making sure everything you say and everything that you produce comes from the mission it doesn't come from the marketing campaign that you want people to know about awesome good awesome Paul Oh, I'd, I'd probably just just add on top of that what Claire's just said because I think she's absolutely spot on because the the church calendar is relentless, um, especially if you're putting in some album releases in there as well, like regular yearly ones, or um, what you've got you, um, conferences that are consistent every single year, and they can just become like once you've done it once, the second year then becomes like a new challenge, like a you know okay right. do it again, and then third year it's like okay this is totally deja vu here from a creative mm. point of view. It's like here we go again, here we go again, and here we go again. And um, I think what Claire was tapping into there, is, so it's absolutely spot on when you start 
reminding yourself of the why, that, that core driver. And the what is just a conference, right? And there's a Simon Sinek three circle thing. Everyone's read it, right? Everyone's at the blog. Yeah, yeah. But the the what is on the outer circle. That's kind of like the end result. But then the how you do it and the why you do it are kind of like more concentric circles mm-hmm. within. And they become, when you identify that why of like, why are we actually doing this conference? Like, are we doing it just to do an in, insane opener? Like, is that the end result? Are we doing it just to create a really nice flyer or a really nice website? Like, mm-hmm. no, like, and when you start communicating from that why it really changes everything and so when you see it in these mm. kind of marketing um creative briefs that you, you can see the ones that just focus on the what because they're just sporadic right they're just hey here's a random idea we should do tiktok it's like but mm. it's over 50s night <laughs> you know we should do a <laughs> um you know just stuff that doesn't really like resonate but it's right. just like it's a great idea right and it feels yeah. fun and fast but i think the ideas and the, the with the church calendar when you start actually tapping into that deeper why, that deeper current, I think that's when the um, the better expressions of creativity come out. And across all forms, so whether that, that is openers or whether that is mm. um, like how how you tell a story or how you kind of present that brand. And, and you both, go on, keep going, Claire. Rhythms, and you just triggered me to think about that, how rhythms and patterns are really important. That That is really important for people, to serve people. And everything we do is about serving. We're taking we're taking this message, we're breaking it down, and we're presenting it to a new generation. So rhythms and patterns and the reasons why things are done are really important. But, um, but the, the religiosity of getting into that is what stifles creativity. Like when things get right. set in stone and not creative people read, lead creative processes, people who think about the problem more than the solution. Mm, Here's right. a problem, let's fix it. Here's a problem, let's fix it. Are you talking about pastors there, Claire? Are you talking about... <laughs> <laughs> it feels like that's what you're hinting at. <laughs> she said people. I it don't could know, be anyone. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> No, you're so right, Claire. And so both of you, how have you how do you break that? Because you've all sat in meetings where it is being driven, you know, it's the the spreadsheet comes out, which kills anyone who's creative. The spreadsheet comes out and you know, we're we're all marched along a line of of this is the process we're gonna go along. And you have these ideas or you have these thoughts or you have these creative inputs. And it can be in big churches of thousands or it can be in smaller churches of 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 hundreds. What what how do you break through in those moments? How do you just say, hey, like, we're gonna do this? Yeah, I was. I think I've been in so many boardroom ideas meetings, right, where the big person walks in and says, "We're going to do this," and it's, uh, you know, and and everyone's kind of looking, thinking, "I don't think that's a great idea," but you've kind of got to go with it, right? Because it's the it's the it's the boss, right? So whether it's the you know the church leader or it's the whoever, it's the boss walked in and just said, "Hey, this is what we're doing." I I don't I don't I don't actually think that's a bad place to be. I think that often that comes that's the um that's the first idea that, that they'll bring to the table and then it's up to the team to kind of say okay how do we actually make this work but when they can be kind of pushed back and that's good i think what i've seen work really well is when smaller teams are empowered to do bigger ideas um mm-hmm. and so that would look like a team of two literally designing how the whole um conference might look right and then getting the full backing from from leadership so whether that's whether in an agency or in a church you know the the idea that there's the tr- a real trust placed on individuals who aren't necessarily you know running the whole conference or running the whole church but that trust is placed uh, and the backing is placed on those mm-hmm. people to kind of run with it I, I've, when i've when I've seen that, it really, really works. And I think, so really, the, the, I don't think there is anything wrong in, in like a pastor coming in and having like a big idea or wants to do something. I think that's the, kind of the challenge. They're the kind of the parameters and creativity mm. works within parameters. Um, I do think that um, there, there is an, an, an extra element, which is are we trusting the creatives to actually come up with great concepts and come mm. up with great ideas that can really help take what we want forward? Mm. it made me really think about it triggered a few different trails so let's see which one of those is like the most pick, useful pick one claire and um, let's run down it i say <laughs> <laughs> we, oh, love oh, oh. we love trails we love trails 
one, I would be set wanting to encourage people to let your work speak for itself. Don't don't just look for church to be your place of creativity. That's right. the only place you express your creativity for a long time. Unless you're in a place of leadership, you're going to be very, very frustrated, creative or unless you are the only person that's creative and all of a sudden all, everything gets dumped on you and you're the only creative and then you get burnout because you've got to come up with all the ideas all the time. Okay. You know how we are in churches. We yeah. go like one extreme to another. We can't just stay the course in the middle and just consistently produce brilliant, right. beautiful things bit by bit. But if, you, if you're somebody who is frustrated creatively and you're stuck in a space like that, find another out find a place there is not a shortage of outlets to release your creativity whether it be with writing creative writing or singing or performance or design or I mean you could even do it under a pseudonym your church don't even need to know it's you you could put okay, up an account nice, yeah. where nobody even knows it's you except for meme account you can do all sorts of things don't let that be the reason find a way of getting that self out of you it's your responsibility with God to get your creativity out the other thing it made me think just quickly on the other thing is that um if you can find a way of building enough relationship with the people that lead you if you're sat in a position a middle management position of creativity if you can work out what it is that people want and become a trustworthy person to be able to say I know how I can get you there but that idea you had won't get you what you want Great. tell me what it is that you want lead me to what you what the result is because often a lot of leaders especially in churches I don't know why it is in churches they want results they're quite results driven it's weird yeah. because we're not a results driven faith well I suppose we are we're not supposed to be works driven are we so right. It's like, I think we there's got to be a way of being able to build enough relationship with that person to be able to say, what do you actually want? What's the result? Let me help you as the creative person, as the creative, um, you know, comms person, get you there. Brilliant. I don't know. I mean, I think that would work if there was enough relationship. Yeah, so good. I mean, I think that's spot on as well, because the, the other part of that is often sometimes when we're bringing that is, it's like, hey, look how incredible I am. Like, look at this fantastic thing. And Claire's just tapping on stuff and they're like, okay, would you be comfortable bringing it as a pseudonym? Would you be bring, comfortable if your name wasn't on there? Right. Um, but the I've, I always think about like, you know, you think of the, the, um, the Parisian painters, right? They would always partner up with each other. And you'd have these like, the Picassos would always be like painting alongside and um, like just really inspirational people and they'd, they'd hang out in the same bars, right? And there's this this sense of like the best creativity often comes out of relationship. So whether that's relationship with your senior leader or relationship like with, with like a fellow creative. So, and God works through relationship, mm -hmm. right? That's how he works. Right. And I think there is something really special about not just thinking what work can I create? What work can I produce? That is really impressive and gets the job done. But what relationship can I build that forges creativity? Mm -hmm. What relationships can I create that brings the best out of me and also challenges the other person as well that's good and paul just tell the story of when me and you were chatting ages ago and you said about um when you worked at hillsong that that you'd never you never asked the question what are other churches doing <laughs> whereas whereas i mean uh, go on tell tell a little story <laughs> well it's um with with my job so i was working with um uh in when I was in Sydney, I was working with, on the on the music campaign. So I was working with United Young and Free and Hillsong Worship. And with that, we got to travel a fair bit as well. So we turned up to conferences, and so you you know you'd get to kind of uh, and then we'd obviously have our own conference, and and I knew what it was like being in a small in a in a small church because that's what how it grew up. And our reference was always okay, guys. We've got a new we've got a new conference coming out what did Hillsong do? And that would be like the default, like, what did Hillsong do? And then I, I just thought that was me, like growing up, you know, me and Rich went to the same little church. Oh, yeah. And um, and it really was like, we've got a flyer for a men's night. Okay, what did, what did Hillsong do the last one? Can we just copy it? Just, and... chop, just, just chop the leader's head off and put mine on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So good. But, um, and then to be, fair, to be fair, I kind of thought that was just us. When I then went, when we were on these trips and we were kind of meeting with these other churches, and we're like, oh no, there really is still this thing of like, oh, what are not just Hillsong Bethel, the the yeah, yeah. you know the the more the people with the bigger brands um, in in the church world, what are they doing? Like, how are they doing it? And um, and it kind of it, it really threw me because the, in the conversations we were having, in the treatments, in the mood boards and stuff like that, we were never looking at okay, what's Bethel doing or Elevation or whoever. It's always like okay, what's the core of this project? Like, what are we trying mm -hmm. to unpack? Who's doing this in the world? So we'd go out and like we, you know you jump onto all the 
um, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's Tumblr or whether it's um, Pinterest or any of these kind of places where mm -hmm. you're kind of pulling in treatment boards. And, and that's your starting point. Your starting point is the core, what we, we said at the top of this, the starting point is the what, like, what are we trying to achieve? Like, why mm -hmm. are we trying to do this? And what's the message we're trying to pull out and everything around that. It is never what so what have so and so done on their last album release, what have XYZ done on their last album release. And I think that's where um that's the part that I was very surprised at is seeing still just how many people would be looking to the larger churches for creative direction. I'm like, mm. we're the worst at it, you know? Right. And like as in we we're just you know, we, if you to compare us to a full creative agency, a Sachi and Sachi, um, one of those levels, it's like, yeah, we, we're we're pretty good, but we're nowhere near like that because right. yet. Um, but we do have something really special, which is obviously mm. a relationship with God. So I think that um, mm. that makes it a bit more fun. Uh, and that takes it takes total boldness and courage to to uncouple yourself from looking left and right and it uh, in this case we're talking about big churches and looking at what they're doing and people would often say well you can be inspired by them but over time it does become a little bit of a competition is maybe not the wrong word but a little bit look they've just done this with how they do stuff or they've just presented it like that so you guys have run stuff um and currently run things how do you go and get inspiration how do you keep creative beyond flicking through the same church stuff that might be on Instagram or looking, you know, looking at the the small world? How do you personally break out and keep creative, Claire? Uh, I don't think it's a wrong question that people are asking. I'm just going to, I'm going to come to that as well, but I yeah, don't yeah. think it's a wrong question that people are asking what are other people doing. I think they just position it at the wrong point in the process. Nice. So what, what are Hillsong doing to be creative is a really good question not what did they what result did they get from their creativity mm. like the result is the bit that we all get obsessed with because it's often the easiest bit and it's it's part of that in the inspiration how do i keep myself inspired i'm trying to always look at what's coming in the distance not what's now if you if you do things that are now you're on trend and being on trend is really fun actually it's great it's right. a great feeling to be on trend to be like yay you know I look like people who are younger than me or like, you know, I've got that vibe or something's gone viral because it resonated. It's a really good feeling to be on trend. And it's and, and a, a lot of new churches, um, a smaller churches think that these bigger churches are, are on trend. So they want to follow that because they think if we're on trend, we'll, um, we'll, we'll like, you know, be better liked or our content will travel right, further right. and that's further than the truth even some of the, even some of the biggest churches aren't even actually on trend culturally they've just got a huge fan base and a really beautiful amazing team that work together with a great energy to keep producing relevant content to be innovative and to be leaning into the future you've got to be able to forecast what's coming and to forecast what's coming you've got to do a lot of digging and a lot of research you've got to be able to look at patterns and trends and where what are people buying what are they eating what are the current apps i mean i look at that all the time what app what if they just launched what feature? Because that feature has come from a lot of research that right. I don't have to do, but somebody else has paid for. So I'm going to look at how that works. How long are people lingering? Why are they lingering? What are the things that people are searching? What search What search tools? We found with Kingdom Company, one of the, one of the things that is currently one of the, the, the most, I suppose, positively engaged with content is when we write prayers that people can read and share with themselves. And that came from literally me searching what are people searching what are the current mm -hmm. hashtags what are people looking for they want language for what's going on and they don't necessarily have the words for themselves so if we write them some prayers right. we can then give them some tools before their head hits the pillow and they can read that and then because we've added value so it's it's forecasting there's a prophetic element to it but there's also a like a shepherding element because good shepherds forecast what's coming in the distance so you look at the fivefold you love the fivefold don't you Rich? i love the fivefold if you look at what that is, the evangelist mobilizes, the apostle wants to recreate, the teacher wants to take everything and make it this, this, this. The shepherd wants to lead the people. And I think that social digital communication, creativity is very shepherding. And it's also very prophetic because it, it forecasts the future for people. And right. it also creates a pathway. You, you don't want to be so far ahead that people don't understand it and think, what is that? That's weird. And no. 
that's not I, I that's you're just a little thing on the side but you don't want to be so in the now that um people think you just copy in as well so it's that constant and, and you've got to be brave haven't you Paul you've got to be brave to do that because it means that it doesn't always land how you thought it was going to land if you if you really want to innovate innovation yeah and, and there, there is duds I think um we did uh, the one that comes to my mind is we spent uh three nights working on this concept for a Christmas release we did and we filmed everything and then we, we watched it in the edit room like this isn't very good <laughs> and we, it was this moment like oh no <laughs> you know we spent so much time it's like it's not very good it's just not landed we, just, we had to scrap it <laughs> and it was fine and we had to do something new but that that I that thing of like there is exactly what Claire said there's something about looking at how a process as something comes to pass not what it is that's come to pass and the how is like, cool, you trust yourself. And I do believe that like creativity is an unfolding of what's within, mm-hmm. right? And so there is something that just you feel like you have to unfold it. Just sometimes it's not very good. <laughs> and that's okay. Absolutely. But talk us, uh, talk us through like you've gone, Clay, you talked there about research. And I know, Paul, you like love your research as well, which is, uh, it seems like it does couple with creativity is that, you know, like you just said there, Paul, you just don't go off on one. And it becomes this weird random thing or, you know, it, that people, Claire, as you said, people might be off put by it. Uh, Paul, talk us through like your research or the way that you go about finding things. Yeah. Um, f- funny, one, one of the things I've been uh, looking at this week is um, I think some people might have used this thing called Notion, right? It's this um, really uh, cool way of kind of like bringing knowledge into one kind of place, destination on, on the web. And um, I've been looking at that because more and more I'm seeing these sites pop up, which are essentially kind of like curation lists of knowledge. And they're using this thing called Notion to do it. And I think what's really interesting about that for me is, is seeing there are people now who are going out and finding all these essentially hyperlinks and wow. um, apps you can use. And rather than just saying, hey, you know, um, here's one place, whatever, they're becoming the curators of that. And um and for me, like that, like my bookmarks on my Safari, right, are super organized because I really like I keep finding things, and I want I want to kind of put them all in this kind of organized place, and so that if if it comes back, right, I can always just, if if I need something or um, whether it's inspiration or whether it's just literally like a web app of for something, I've got it nicely stored. But more and more, I'm seeing these places like become curators mm-hmm. of um, of inspiration, and I think that is really a reflection of maybe what we should be in our own lives, which is like, Mm -hmm. how do we become our own curators? Curators of not just creativity, but curators of the type of news we consume, curators of the type of um, uh, content we want to consume. Like that, that's now becoming our role in digital spaces. How do we become better curators? And Mm -hmm. I think when it comes to that moment where you find yourself in a meeting and it's like, man, I need to have some fresh ideas to, the, to this place. I think that's where you've really got to tap into what makes you dry, what makes you tick. For me, it's nature. So, like, if you, you know, most things I follow on Instagram, like whales, you know, doing stuff in the country or the, the animal. <laughs> <laughs> not the country. It's not much going on. So, <laughs> it's a joke. I'm a big fan of whales. But um, you're, a, you're a quarter Welsh, actually, Paul, in case anyone does, in case anyone does write in. Claire, are you any Welsh? You're, a, you're you, you married a Welshman. I married a Welshman. And so your, kid, <laughs> your kids are half Welsh. All right, we just need to mop up the Welsh comments there. That Sorry, was awesome. thanks. thanks, Rich. And yeah, so I think becoming a better curator is something that we we all are kind of, maybe we've been forced to become, but we, you know, with this digital kind of landscape, we're all becoming curators. And I think when it comes to creativity, it's really worth putting together ways that you can better yeah. curate ideas, whether that's through Pinterest, whether that's through um uh, Evernote, OneNote, or however you work, maybe just screenshots on your uh, on your iPhone. I think everyone's got a way that works for them. But I think the the key is is how do you curate, and are you mm-hmm. intentional about the curation? Nice. Mm-hmm. He got. I love that curation, and it, it, it's the curiosity as well that that's probably why you like that. And most people that will be creative have something in common is that they are curious to a fault. They want to like break everything down and figure out like 
what made that work why was that interesting even I mean science is creative it's a problem solving it's so creative that's why maybe nature and all of those elements how does this work how can we recreate it how does it work how can we re recreate it and so I am a true old-fashioned scrapbooker so Pinterest works for me my organization you probably cry Paul if you saw it it's, <laughs> it's, it's my, my desktop is just about a thousand downloaded images and every so I should have to delete them all because my, my Mac no longer runs. My son comes the, in and types everything Those the good days, over. right? When, when, <laughs> when you've got like your thousand uh, screen grabs, it's like, okay, yeah. now I've got to go through and now I've got to, and you know, you might do Which that once every two months. Exactly. Yeah. I, but I am a Pinterest. I am a, I love, I love just going through there. I love following people that are not like me constantly most of my feed my instagram things and i watch when the kids say to me mum you watch the most random programs like netflix does not know what to send me because i do it's not confused. follow a pattern <laughs> i don't like it's confused i'm like no i would not like that my youtube is like no i really would not like that <laughs> but i but because i'm purposefully trying to stay curious what do you think why do you think that where's that leading why why do you arrive at that decision what was it that made you think like that or do that or go in that direction? And then because on mass, people do things on mass. You think you're being, you think you're being, you know, new and fresh and you realize you've been led by a whole sequence of things like consumer reports and shopping and, you know, like the way that the world is. That's why so many, you know, even, even with the, um, vaccine that we're all scrabbling to look for now they're looking for the same things just in slightly different ways and they'll arrive at a decision lots of people will arrive at a decision around the same time because there's loads of factors that are pushing us towards this new technology or pushing us towards new ideas and behavior changes and people change which lead you to lead us all to the future even if we don't want it so I'm constantly trying to gather ideas colors ways what people are interested in, why they're interested in it. I, I spent hours looking at comments mm. on like YouTube videos or Instagram things. Why did that make you say that? Why is that bothering you? Mm. What is it? What is at the core of that? Why is preacher sneakers a thing? Why is it bothering you all so much? What is it? What is the essence of that? Why, what is driving you? And how can then we be looking at that as an issue of the human heart and how can we bring the gospel into that and present it in a way that is life-giving, enjoyable, entertainment, enriching, which is what the Christian life is. Yeah, amazing. Amazing. Um, all right. Um, uh, maybe one or two last questions, but where's the line between clickbait, trendy, relevant, cool, and like gospel i'm not saying um, even me saying that is as if i'm removing gospel from any of that i don't think gospel's clickbaity by the way but um but like do you know how far can the boundaries be pushed like where do you where does it stop or or how do you navigate those things of like you know what like do you know we just can't go there because it's just not part of how we believe or how uh, what we what we confess to believe and the jesus that we know so so how do you navigate those things I think in the word clickbait, it the idea is if you actually just step back and think about that word, like bait is something where I can catch you, right? So I use the bait to catch you and to get you for my game. I think it's really important to think about, okay, what is the content you're creating and is it serving? So, you know, it's not clickbait if it's serving people. And you can use right. a tool like a, a fancy title or a, a, a thumbnail, some optimization, whatever, like to to help you increase the chances of this content serving people. But I think there is this sense of the clickbait is often for how can I make as much money as possible? How can I get as many eyes on this content as possible mm -hmm. for my own gain? I think it's really important to, to recognize like what the, is the content we're creating? Is it serving people? And that's where I think it's, it's, it's good to really go through that and think actually, is, uh, is this actually clickbait? Are we creating clickbait mm -hmm. content or okay, is nice. it um, stuff that actually- uh, here's a what do you think about this Paul you've probably done a bit more you might have done some research on like that on Jesus and the way that he did some very clickbaity clickbaity right. you know things like you know the story the story immediately of the woman who with the issue of blood comes to mind where he walks into a town he does five things apparently in a row that were shock worthy like I mean like oh my gosh men are not supposed to do that 
Women are not supposed to do that. He then puts, he then lets a woman who's got an issue of blood uh, touch his cloak. He's supposed to go and burn it. He then takes that cloak that's supposed to have been burned and puts it over in the next story, puts it over a girl and heals her and brings her back to life. Like mm. it is all of these things that are like, oh my, oh no, did you? I can't believe you did that. You know, and Jesus, like, these stories contextualize we have so much history now and hope so much contextualization right. of being able to understand he totally knew that those things were going to cause a gasp and a shock in that crowd and exactly what you're saying paul though was not to bring people to the the idol of him it was to bring people into a new life that was supposed to be trans transformational followership but claire i mean i i, I love that i think it's brilliant but I'm talking, and, and and same with what you said, Paul, but there are fine lines. And so the fine lines are, um, you know, you've just talked about like, you know, we point, the clickbait points to Jesus. But how do you navigate fine lines of where it's actually just pointing to you or it's pointing to look how creative we've been? Have you got some clickbait in mind that you're thinking of? Oh, I just need to open up my Instagram and spend a, a minute on it, you know, kind of like... I think it's got, I suppose what I'm getting at, and it's a good question, is is I go through Instagram and I see a lot of stuff and it is a bit confusing, which is, you know, for example, I received an email the other day from someone who was a preacher selling me a T-shirt. And at the end of him selling me T-shirts so of this email I received, um, it said, it said, hey, you know, it was all about his T-shirt and and him getting some T-shirts in um, sales, which I don't have any issue with particularly. And then at the end, he put a line which is like, hey, just know that we're praying for you and your family um, this week, thinking, no, you're not. You're uh, selling me a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it was like, it was a bit ridiculous. I was just like, oh, this stinks. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. Just be honest. You want to sell a few T-shirts. Don't now tell me you're praying for me. You're not praying for me. You, you want me to buy a T-shirt. And so, and, 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 and that's an extreme version, but there is a little bit, you start going through and it's kind of like, hang on, is this serving you and your platform and you and your followers and you and your influence? Or is this actually serving people? And, and and helping them through. And I think that is a fine line. It's a fine line for everyone when they pick up their phone and start recording something. It's like, it's back to the original thing we started. Like, what is driving this? And, and and where does that fall and how does that work? You know, you've got some people who've got teams of people follow, following them around with cameras. Um, but how do you know? How can you can't check somebody's motives? You don't know. With t-shirts. Are you, are you I, saying I, I, the t-shirt? I'll, I'll the t-shirt's <laughs> <laughs> t-shirt, not going to save someone for Christ anytime soon. You know, it's not going <laughs> to bring rather deep revelations to someone. Well, that, sorry, that was part of his sell. That was part of his sell to me is that the t-shirt, the t-shirt was spreading the gospel. I'm thinking it's lying in your pocket as well. <laughs> just, <laughs> that's a, that's a be honest. <laughs> you can just invite someone around for dinner or you can buy a t-shirt. I think you should buy the t-shirt. <laughs> that's but, how you'll tell them. It's a little bit cynical of me, but it was a bit more like, can we just be honest about be be creative and do your own t-shirt business? I'm all for that. I, I totally get it, but I don't think I liked gonna... it. A, a friend of ours has got they've got a charity in uh, Uganda, and they've just recently released a jumper that says, "This jumper paid for somebody's lunch today." Oh, that's brilliant. That's what it says, and I'm like, yeah, that's really clear marketing. It's not like you're not trying to sell me a lifestyle. You're just trying to tell me I'm basically getting to wear something. I get something. You get something. They get something. Brill. We're all winning. clear. Instead open. Instead honest. Honest marketing. Let's not talk about where the T-shirts have been created, though, because that could get down a whole new rabbit warren. <laughs> There'll be someone again all writing about whales and writing about these T-shirts. Sounds like my... my uh, it sounds like... Maybe... The... Go on. Sorry. No, go on, go on. There's always going to be, isn't there? There's just always going to be where there's people. There's just always going to be mixed motives. Yeah. And, like, we're in a really weird crossover between platform influencer social media right what does that mean there's some pioneers and they get some of them are getting it right and some of them are getting it wrong and we haven't got a we haven't got a path yet to follow us what is an actual christian influencer there's a lot of pastors and preachers i think who have taken up roles of being influencers but tried to maintain being pastors at the same time and i think those two things are separate Right. I think if you want to serve a local flock and community, it's one thing. If you want to be a celebrity and um, entertainment industry, it's another thing. And I don't think having Christian entertainment is wrong. Agreed. Just think it's 
making sure you're clear about what you do. And so if you are an influencer, if you are somebody who is receiving goods or wanting, be honest about what your merch is for, but also be honest about even what you're wearing, where it's come from. Every other influ- influencer has to hashtag ad, has to say sponsored post, has to put that sort of um, vulnerability, exposure out there, visibility right. out there. And I would love to see that develop more in the Christian world. Can we be more honest about that Um our reasons for doing things can we be more overt about our reasons for asking for finance or asking for why this is coming to you what do you think paul yeah i i i, I think one of the the hard parts I'll, I'll say a couple of things the first thing is you know when you have like a dollar note like a dollar note can be used for incredible good or incredible darkness right it's mm-hmm. it's this, it's you can use it for whatever i think the gospel is the same as well i think people can there is this thing which is like this incredible message, but it can definitely be used to perverse as well. And I think that's when you see a lot of, hey, buy my green cloth and I've got the most incredible ad campaign around this green cloth right. and it's going to change your world, you know? And I've got Bieber sponsoring the green cloth or something like that. You can see huge influences. I think that's where it's, uh, I think that that for me is this sense of like, oh, well, how are you using it? I think going back to the right at the top of the thing like you know creativity where does it come from I, I really feel like creativity is often this thing that's birthed and it's this offering right and it's this thing of like hey this is what it is you know and 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 the more I'm detached from it the better it's like it's not even mine I'm just kind of making sure I'm a custodian mm-hmm. of this right and I feel like when you can really sense that from people when it's so let's go on that t-shirt thing right I don't think you get that same sense of like hey I'm just being a custodian of this idea it's like no no I think I kind of think that he just wants to sell some t-shirts for something else that he's doing right and I think the when it comes to um how do we best present these ideas that's where we should be putting all the best marketing mm-hmm. and concepts on all the best titles all the best thumbnails all the best you know angles to help birth these ideas I think where it gets a bit more perverse is when you realize hang on we feel we're talking about the same thing, but it, it feels like it's it's come from a different place. Like mm-hmm. in the same way the dollar can be used for good or for bad, it feels like this this message is it's kind of being warped. I think that's the discernment, and you feel that when you see that email. It's the discernment when you see um, extortionate rates for a um, a concert or for anything. And it's, there's you know, mm-hmm. I think that for me is probably the next the next phase of of what you know the church is going into. It's this thing of like. Uh, how how are we going to actually start addressing some of these things that we're all sensing, mm. but we, we haven't really put the right language around it yet? Yeah, and uh, well, let's not go there on this podcast. We've always been controversial; already have with several things. And if the t shirt if the t shirt man's listening, please send me that. Send me the email again, and I'll buy one of your t shirts. Because uh, <laughs> now I feel oh, no. bad. Oh, no, it was no. me. Oh, no. <laughs> I won't. I don't think I'll be doing it. <laughs> uh, but hopefully he's still praying. Um, but uh, it, it's really good, guys. It's really good. Just the last question, because um, uh, I just I'd like to put it out there. What is what when you're looking out there in the landscape of where you're doing stuff, Paul? You're working with uh, artists and trying to move them forward. Is it high gloss stuff that you're looking at? Is it lights, camera, action? We're in the middle of a pandemic. What is actually reaching people? What are people clawing for out there on the digital space? Because five years ago, it was, you know, funky editing. It was, you know, real high gloss stuff. People were people were going to that kind of thing. Now you've got like, you know, really boring websites uh, that are up there that have got nothing to them. Literally, they just look like the first ever website created and they are driving millions of people towards it. You know, where are you at with that, Paul? Where are you at with that, Claire? Go for it, uh, I think the word is authenticity. I think people are craving that more than ever before and they sense it. And when it's um, when it comes to creating content, I'm a big fan of go high or go low. So anything in the middle just, you know, is, is not worth it. Mm-hmm. The hard part is the the low is actually the, the bars come up quite a bit in recent mm-hmm. times. And so it feels like there's now this new gap of low. And so I think like Mischief, MSCHF, if you go to their website, um, it's this uh, new wave of brutalism that's coming in, which is this sense of what is the most minimal, non like non-slick approach we can create that is just brutal on the eye because it's just so rough. And that's, you know, you could compare that with super shaky iPhone footage or GoPro footage. Um, And I think when it comes to creators, 
that's that's really the, I think the the bar of low is like is now kind of lifted up because everyone's got DSLRs and nice cameras and all the rest. So now like is there a new low that you can cre- create content that's even more authentic? <laughs> yeah. You know, more rough, more um, mm. you know, unfiltered, more un um, tweaked, and you know, I, I, one of the interesting things I've seen recently is this uh, move of like with. Uh, with uh, kids who are sharing content like they're doing less than like um like 16 year olds are doing way more like no makeup looks and it's this new wave that's coming in it's like we don't wear makeup Mm -hmm. like why would we wear makeup like that's just for for, and it's like ah this is coming through like this is going to be a new wave that's coming through like what is the least i can do because as the least i can do is more authentic and it might feel more jarring but that is more actually who i am i'm a more so I, I like that idea, right? That's kind of where I see things going. It's more brutal, more harsh. But then on the flip side, there is this thing of like it's, the, the top end content is going to get even better. And like, right. I think when it comes to like when you're approaching a project, I think that's one of the first questions everyone should be asking. It's like, is this a high project? As in like, you know, we're filming things on red cameras and we've got colorists, directors, you know, producers, we've got the whole shebang. Or are we doing this as like rough, raw, ready, no makeup, shot on an iPhone? An iPhone's probably too brutal. Shot on a, uh, a handheld Nokia, Nokia camera. Th- a Nokia 3310. <laughs> yeah, just like jarring around like this. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it's like five frames a second. Yeah, but it, uh, I think that is this, that's, that's, that's the trend that I see coming. I'm like, mm. the trend won't be what's the new filter. It's going to be how can I appear even more raw, rough around the edges, real, um, because authenticity is it, it's becoming um, the, the the currency of value of like how authentic you feel you connecting with someone else. That guy sends the email of a with a t shirt. Like I don't think he's praying for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you you see a handheld piece of footage of him and his family praying for people. It's like oh, awesome. This guy's mm-hmm. this guy's legit. And I think that that's where it's going to be. Um, that. Yeah, that, that for me is, is something interesting that I'm definitely nice. looking at. Claire? Mm. Oh, gosh, I wish I had video skills. I love listening to you. I'm like, oh, I feel like I don't know anything. <laughs> um, I think fast anything fast-paced, video is not going anywhere, is it, Paul? It's still by far the most consumed, watched. And the algorithm favorite, favors it. So if you really want your content to travel and get in front of the right eyes, the right people, video keeps people on the app for as long, longest or carousel. So you want to be creating content like that. But short form, TikTok this last year has really changed, like especially that younger consumer. You've got 15 seconds, maybe 12 seconds, the TikToks that I do, around 12 seconds is what is what grabs people and keeps people re-watching, what, what, what gets people to watch your content again, which really helps it travel and it really helps it land. When somebody watches something once, they might get a sense of it, but when somebody watches something twice or three times or four right. times, you then start to see it land and have a bigger impact on their lives. And because we've got a gospel, message and we're we're not just putting out you know bubble and froth we've got a message we want things we want things and so people's attention span is you know around 12 13 seconds so I think like you're saying it's true like if you want to go long then go YouTube do something really long form and evergreen and thoughtful and really part of a really long-term story and strategy but everything else should be quick turnaround lots of faces lots of people lots of real life lots of helpful things things that are shareable and um, breaking that down. And actually, I have to say that stuff, especially the lower end, is a, is a lot easier to do than having right. to beautifully craft a Photoshop image. Anybody can do it. Like, I am not Photoshop chained. I, I do all of my images on Keynote. It kills, like, other designers because I'm like, I, can, I don't have Photoshop <laughs> skills. I make everything in Keynote because it's the easiest thing for me Amazing. to do. <laughs> Very good. And, um, but I get it out and it travels and it doesn't matter because... Yeah. There is a brutalism to it, and I I actually really like the brutalist approach. I think having that thing that makes you when when somebody scrolls over and they they what is it? I don't know what I feel when I come on your content, but I just feel like I want to stop. That is like really important. <laughs> oh, Claire, we've lost Paul. This is the reality of filming during a pandemic. He's he's got someone calling him in. I take it you've got to go there, Paul. 
You're just looking at where my trousers, Rich. Oh. <laughs> you didn't have your Zoom pants on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Zoom under. No, uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. I mean, it's yeah, interesting you say. I just um, I read this morning that someone put something up on a blog I was reading that said, you know, people are, are searching in Google for answers to questions that that vloggers are answering in like two minutes, but we're spending thirty five minutes on a Sunday trying to address a question that no one's asking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. and I thought, oh yeah, it's pretty true that. And so, look, we got a lot of work to do, but uh, just to encourage everyone out there, Paul and Claire, uh, both are on Instagram. Claire is what? Claire Hooper. At Claire Hooper, Paul. At Claire Hooper. I mean, someone got there early. Well done, Claire. The Killing day that. one, it came when Come it came out on Instagram. <laughs> Did you really? Hooper. But it's it's uh, it's Claire without an I, which is I always get it wrong. So it's uh, C L A R E Hooper. And Paul, what about yourself? Where can they find you? Uh just P C Marts. But I mean, I, it's not worth. Oh. It. I'm honestly not. I'm not worth a follow. Well, <laughs> don't, don't Claire, follow me. Claire, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you know Claire, but uh, in our midst, we've got a Dove Award winner, Paul Martin. He's not even. He's not Instagrammed about it. He's not tweeted about it. I know. That's amazing. I know. I mean, he's 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 not put makeup on, so I'm suspecting he's going to do a video after this, which is very <laughs> raw and authentic yeah. of him holding. But congrats, no. Paul. Paul won it for a video that he wow. made. How, how many years ago? Two years ago? A year ago, yeah. It, 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 was, it was a Hillsong project. A few people involved, including myself. Yeah. yeah so. What an honour. I know, I know. So have you got a Dove, Claire, a Dove Award? No, Matt was nominated for a Dove Award, but he never got it. He got pipped at the post. Oh. <laughs> right, well, we've lost... Did. Did he? I don't know. No, don't. No, don't. No, 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 no. You had chickens, didn't you? Paul's Amazon parcel yeah. has arrived. So I think Yay! That's, that's... which Amazon guy is knocking at the door? I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't need a signature. <laughs> well, I do know. a live bo- unboxing, Paul, because they're quite popular, apparently, on YouTube. <laughs> we should do but... that, yeah. <laughs> I don't minimal want to, cameras keep I it brutal yeah i don't want to embarrass <laughs> anyone with a live unboxing so i don't know what's actually in there so claire paul massive thank you and um and thanks for sharing all that you've done everyone you can find all of this and please share or do whatever else needs to happen to get this going viral is that still a word i don't know right thank you guys what a great conversation there i hope you enjoyed it as much as we did they're great people and i love the way that they think and unpack creativity and building the local church hey don't forget you can get more information at richmartin.co.uk including a church trends email this is an email that can be sent to your inbox of where i just collate lots of things that might help save you time in building local church jump on it just put your email in and then once a month i'm going to be sending an email out to anyone on there i'm not going to bombard you i'm just going to provide information and links and shortcuts to what i think would be helpful to any church builder um, around europe so just jump on there thanks so much for being with us there's going to be another one of these dropping soon whenever i can get it out there as soon as i can but thanks so much for being with us